Hello, I'm Robert Bastian of Laryngopedia and Bastian Voice Institute. I'm uh, making this video for persons with retrograde cricopharyngeus dysfunction, inability to belch, no burp, persons who have undergone the Botox treatment and now their question is, so how do I practice burping so that I can make this injection of Botox into the sphincter once and done? I'm 26, I had the Botox, I want to try to not ever need it again to burp normally now for the rest of my life, using the Botox as what I call training wheels. Well, it's a little hard for me to tell you exactly what to do, but I can give you some tips and pointers. First of all, recognize that the burping at the beginning of the Botox cycle is variable between different people. Some describe quite large, frequent burps almost off the bat within a few days. Uh, others describe micro burps. We think they have a stretched esophagus and so they're just doing overflow burping. There are a few who we're sure we hit the target, we're sure the dose is adequate, but they seem to have a hard time getting started. Um, so what are the tips and pointers? Well, if you are one who burps readily, what you're going to do is focus on the uh, cascade of sensations that occur. So you've experienced, say, 50 burps, and you're becoming a little bit accustomed to that feeling of the gurgle and the movement of air, and then it ends with a burp. Well, once you figure out that sequence, you begin fidgeting and trying different things hoping to make the burp happen faster. So let's say you th say, okay, I'm getting that feeling here and it's gurgling a little bit and based on the prior 50 burps, I think it's gonna happen in about five seconds. Well, what you're going to do is to search for fidgets and movements that might make it happen in four seconds or three seconds. And whatever you can do to hurry the burp along is the thing that you will practice long-term hoping to be able to burp forever. Now, what are some of the, the pointers? They are head turn. A lot of people say if they turn their head, turn their head, maybe squeeze their stomach as they turn their head, that's one. Another is to lower the larynx. Uh, if you're old enough, you might remember Bullwinkle, the cartoon character who talked kind of with a voice like this, a little bit of a Rocky uh, Balboa kind of a quality. Or you can just think of yawning. You, if you see my larynx, you'll see that when I yawn, my larynx lowers, so some people do that they to see if they can get it. Some people think high pitch, uh, like you're thinking uh, that high pitch and see if that works. And then some people talk about almost torso tweaks or turns or, or head plus torso. So the point is, <clears throat> once you burp micro burps or uh, bigger burps, with the help of Botox, now see if you can help the Botox to either make the burp bigger or to make the burp happen faster. And that is the technique, whether it's head turn, chin thrust, looking back, doing this, doing the lowered larynx, the yawn, doing the imagining a high pitch, whatever uh, comes to mind, just keep fiddling and figuring and seeing if you can figure out a way to speed the burp along, make it happen faster, or to make it happen bigger. And then you would want to use carbonation or gum chewing. Uh, once the burps become a little less frequent and less spontaneous, use gum chewing and carbonation so that you have plenty of burps to practice on. And in that way, we really hope that your treatment will be once and done. Of the nearly 800 we have done in, uh, as of December of 2021 uh, in our group, uh, I, it's still looking like about three and a half, four out of five keep the ability permanently. If anybody watching this comes up with a strategy, a series of movements that you find has been very helpful, we'd love to hear about it. Thank you for listening.